What's up YouTube, back here again with another video, and today, yes, we are going to get into a bind and fly. Now, if you've been a uh, watcher of my channel for a little while now, I think the last bind and fly I did was the uh, Baby Hawk R, and then before that was the Isheen Dust X 58. And, uh, I, you know, I have a whoop, a tiny whoop, but honestly, the brushless ones like this are way better for inside flying if you ask me uh, now I get you know races and stuff are on the brushed ones but honestly for the money these brushless little guys are way more fun that dust axe was super fun but I ended up ruining it uh, and it took bigger props I think or no I think it was the same props but I ended up messing it up and the bind button fell off so it kind of didn't work anymore so anyway, I figured it was time to upgrade and get into a more whoop-like version. So what we have here is the URUAV, uh, uh, what is it, Tiny 65 URV, UR65. So it's the URUAV is the brand and it's the UR65. Now I got the standard version. Let me show you the box real quick. This is the FR Sky standard version. So it came with a charger and three batteries. Here's the box. All right. Uh, you get the little drone like this. Uh, one of the batteries was underneath. We'll get into that in a minute. I got the top loose just to kind of get through it. So you get three of these batteries. I got one over here still charging. Up, oh, actually it's done. And all the rest of these, I only got one left. And you get this charger. So these are my other whoop batteries. So. Let's compare it to the whoop batteries first. So these are 250 milliamp hour high volts, all right? And these are like standard 260 high volts. Uh, so they're pretty much the same size, so they should work. And you do have a little bit of a lead here. So you should be able to use your pre-existing whoop batteries. Uh, so you get three of these, that's cool. Uh, however, so this one's already got a little puffiness to it. So I don't think these are gonna last very long, but whatever, you get three in the box. Here's the charger, uh, just a basic one cell. You can do the, uh, the smaller connector and the pH 2.0 connector. So these have the larger connector for better uh, voltage flow. So it's the pH 2.0 connector. This charger you can select uh, here on this side is 0.2 amps and 0.6 amps. So that's your charge rate. Down here is going to be your uh, 4.2 volts and your 4.35 volts, so your regular standard 1S cells and your high volt cells. Okay, that's all this guy is going to do. Now it can take here, let's unplug this guy. It can take here on the side uh, DC and XT60, and you have a USB out, so you can charge, you know, whatever phone or whatever you got. So there's your 5 volt out. It takes 7 to 26 volts in, and either the DC or the XT60. And your little LED readout will give you all your voltage information, and you can charge six at a time. So there you go. Pretty basic little charger. This guy's making a lot of noise, but uh, like a little hu humming sound. But it will work and get the job done. So it's kind of cool. For 90, you got paid with with uh, discount codes and coupons that I had. I think I paid 91 dollars for the whole uh, kit and caboodle so uh, then you get a little screwdriver some extra screws some extra props a couple little rubber bands I don't know, maybe they help hold on the uh, help hold on the battery maybe or whatever but any which way there you go so that's what you get in the box three batteries charger little extra stuff there you get the directions and the drone itself so let's take a look let me see which way I got this here, I believe. Okay, this is the front. So it's gonna come in like this, all right? So we got four, zero, six, zero, three, 1700 kV motors with standard tiny whoop size props. Off the top of my head, it's like 31 millimeters maybe. Uh, whatever it is, it's the standard uh, tiny whoop size props. Um, you get a 25 milliwatt little VTX camera all-in-one combo up in there. Uh, it is a 48 channel. So we got uh, the six lights on the top are going to be your channel indicators. 
and your five or eight lights on the bottom, or I'm sorry, your six lights on the top are going to be your band indicators, and your eight lights on the bottom are your channel indicators. And that's going to have a corresponding guide here. Now you're just going to have to count the lights and your channels to kind of get an idea. So you can see blue on the top, that's going to be your bands, and then the red on the bottom is going to be your channels. Now I will show you if you know your channels by uh, letters and all, they do kind of match up. If you look at this, I usually fly R8 for my micro, so R would be R8, uh, 5917, and that would be band 5, channel 8, 5917. So I believe this, these frequencies do follow a standard um, layout for the most part. So you see you got 5865, 5865. So if you don't have one of these cards, you're not familiar, and you only know your your kind of your number by F5 or B6, whatever you fly, maybe this can help you here. So there you go. Pause that, and that can help you with your channel indications. 25 milliwatts, little button up on the top. You push it to change your channel. Push and hold to change your band. Very very simple. Another cool feature with this camera is you can actually tilt it by loosening these screws here on either side and you can change the pitch uh, there ain't a whole lot of travel in there but you do get a little bit you can kind of angle it up see I mean it's gonna sit flat it does it's better than nothing I mean most of them are flat like flat flat so a little bit of angle it's kind of cool now we do have OSD this is an f3 crazy B flight controller all right soft mounted in the corners 1s capable and that's pretty much all there is to this little guy, right? Yeah, that's it. Uh, you got your plugs for your motors, so if you need to replace them, you don't have to solder them, but you shouldn't have to. Uh, again, receiver is integrated into this guy, and we'll go over that. That's mainly the reason why I'm making this video, and we are running Betaflight. Uh, let's pop over to the computer. I'm kind of getting confused by the directions and all that other good stuff. So I haven't updated or upgraded anything. This is the way it came to me stock as of today. All right, so we just plugged it in. Let's get into Betaflight. I'll show you the changes that I've made, and I still really haven't flown this guy, so I'm not 100% sure how it's going to fly yet, but we're just going to talk about binding and getting it to respond correctly and work. So stock out of the box, it is going to come with Betaflight 3.4, if you can see here, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but it does say Betaflight 3.4, and the target is CBFR, so it's going to have its own little thing. All right, now, if we go to ports, so if you open this guy up, it's going to tell you right here, all right, you don't set serial. So do not go into there and set your serial protocol because this doesn't have a serial protocol. It has an integrated SPI bus receiver. So it's something different, but it will work in either D16 or D8 mode. I have mine in D8 mode. So what you're going to want to do, plug this guy in, go to your configuration, go down to your SPI receiver support. It's already going to be selected. And then you're going to want to decide whether you want D or X. D is for D8. Okay, so if you do FR sky underscore D, you, that's D8. So we got D8 right there, and then it's gonna bind. You're also gonna get your telemetry through here and every, all that good stuff. So that is cool. So there you go. So that you're gonna have to select that. The other changes I made, I changed this to 4.4. Four. I feel like that's a little bit better cycle load for an F3. I always change my arming angle to 180 degrees. Motor stop was on. Uh, by stock so you know that's your choice uh, so UR65 was already set telemetry was set OSD uh, none of this stuff was selected so I kind of just left it until I kind of give it a fly I did select RX set so we can make the motors beep when we lose it and that's pretty much all I did in here the biggest thing is you got to know to bind this guy is you got to know which one you're selected, right? So if you're on D, D8, and if this is an X, D16, okay? Uh, that's going to be the big, big deal. The other thing is 
by factory this is going to be set to um t e t a e r uh so make sure you select which one you use i use a e t r so i made sure to go in there and select the right one so we got pitch roll y'all and throttle now so we're good to go aux 2 aux 1 aux 3 so we are officially good to go so that's good there now the other thing is if you just do d8 with the telemetry on like that telemetry and you don't mess lost. with anything your rssi value is going to be already going and running so that's going to work for you all that good stuff is going to work so it's going to know sd now i did change this around for my liking so it you know it had a bunch of crap on the screen the artificial horizon sidebars all that other stuff it was flyable but uh, i set this guy to my preferred liking and that's pretty much it i didn't mess with pids i didn't uh oh yeah modes it's already set it'll list on here aux one is set to arm so if you set your transmitter to aux one it will arm but i recommend you set this up how you like it. Uh, you know, I have aux one on arm. Angle was aux two already, but I like to keep angle at the top for these little guys. And again, you just set this stuff to the way that you like it and the way that your controller is set up. So I got air mode and angle on this guy set up and a beeper. All right, so we can select so that beeper's activated, deactivated. And that's it. I didn't mess with the PID tuning. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now, I know that I need to be in D16 mode, or D8 uh, mode, excuse me, D8 mode. Okay, so now that you got into Betaflight and you kind of did your basic setup, and you know that you have X or D, so mine was set to D, so I need D8, right? D8, uh, we got D8 set up on the transmitter. Now, to bind this guy, I was holding the button. Your bind button is right here gonna hold the button and plug the battery in and it wasn't going into bind mode and it's not very clear in the directions what you actually need to do is plug the battery in all right it's gonna flash then push this button push the bind button and the lights will go solid and that means that at that point it will be in bind mode and then it'll go solid then it'll flash and then it'll kind of make a little bit of lights and then you'll know you'll be bound all right make sure you got your bind on here first before you start that so plug in the battery then hit the bind button. So we can plug it in now. Plug it in. Telemetry recovered. So if you're not bound, the lights will be flashing at this point. So when you push this button, the lights will go solid like this. So we got solid lights. It'll go solid, and then flash again slowly. And then when you exit bind mode on your controller, it will go into the solid mode, and now we're good to go. Now if you have motor stop selected, when you arm, the motors won't arm or won't spin up so keep that in mind I turn motor stop off so the motors will run uh, set your channel and you're pretty much good to go at this point you just got to screw this bad boy back on and uh, and give it a flight so that's pretty much telemetry it. lost oh the one other thing go um, when you have it plugged in Go to your telemetry page and discover new sensors so you can get your RSSI into your controller properly. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. So that's it. That's uh, what you get in the box. That's how to bind it. That's how to do a basic setup. Uh, let me fly this bad boy, figure out uh, you know what I like, what I don't like, even if it's any good at all. And uh, we'll go to the, go from there. I'll let you know. Review to follow. So there you go. That's the UR, UAV. Uh, you are 65. That's how to bind it. That's how to set it up. That should get you going. Again, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Any questions, you know, put them down below and I will try to help anybody and everybody out that I can. Again, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.